You're not my dad. <laughs> It's me. What up, Hope Biscuits? It's your girl Skitten back at it again. I'm so sorry, I did not mean to interrupt you. What were you saying? I was saying I'm here again. But they know that you're here. Yeah, I was, I was just repeating that. But they saw you. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> and T. Hoosen, hope you guys are doing well. Hope you guys are staying safe and sanitized. Mm -hmm. um, the Rona has really messed up our travel plans. Okay. That's a that's a factual statement, I would say. It is it is truly messed up our travel plans. Yeah, I I was leaving you guys. Uh, I was eloping to Europe, and I was going to learn how to speak French. Yes. And uh, you know, bonjour, mi oh, ami. Titty croissant. Mi ami, uh, French toast <laughs> stick. But in all actuality, um, hope you guys are prepared to spend a nice, safe, socially distanced COVID Christmas with us. Yeah, celebrate under a tree of sickness and opening presents of immunity. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. All right, we're here to watch the fish tier list from Tier Zoo, and without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. That is a really cool He's ability. still there. Do it again. <laughs> it took him out, bro. This video was made in partnership with Curiosity Stream. Their model's made in partnership with Curiosity Stream. Fish are one of the most diverse stream. factions in the entire game. They are extremely popular among both casual and competitive players. And I did it right that time. I redeemed myself. <laughs> was made in partnership with Curiosity Stream. This did. Fish are one of the most diverse factions in the entire game. They are extremely popular among both casual and competitive players and make up the vast majority of the aquatic player base. And with so many different potential fish builds to choose from, it can be difficult to know which builds are actually competitively viable in the current meta. I've always thought about fish, just as disclosure, besides the big fish, mm -hmm. that the small fish were just like, bro, strength in numbers, Basically. we pretty much just suck, there's a ton of this, yeah. good luck. Okay. It's okay if one of us dies. It yeah. doesn't matter. I got another cousin, bro. <laughs> <laughs> cousin Jimmy, no! <laughs> Which one was that? <laughs> We're gonna go through the tier list of fish. This will by no means be a comprehensive tier list. I mean, there Obviously. are more than 3,000 variants of the catfish build alone. Still, Jesus. by highlighting the standout <laughs> builds in both high and low you tiers, thought. You hopefully thought you I can we give you going. a good understanding of where the fish faction fits into the current meta. And if there's a fish, fish I didn't fits. include, hopefully by seeing my logic in this video, you'll be able to evaluate that fish for yourself. Oh, also, quick disclaimer, since I've already made a shark tier list, I'm omitting sharks from this video. Cool. As Before we dive into the tier list, first I want to give you an overview of the abilities oh commonly God. found in the fish faction, as well as some background on the history of the fish build. So, the basic fish build doesn't have much in terms of unique perks or abilities. Which is actually great, as it means that each player has a lot of room for customization. The basic fish build is most famous for its use. Mm -hmm. He said a lot of room for customization, and my first thought was like this day. <laughs> Skin special ability: fins, gills, penis. <laughs> Thanks. Of the Thanks, fin baby. and gill abilities, oh, no. both of which offer huge advantages in water while predictably being entirely useless on land. Back during the Devonian expansion, long before the vertebrate faction had unlocked terrestrial builds, fish were the top tier build in the game, having a crushing matchup against the top arthropods, their main competitors. In today's meta though, fish have to compete with a lot more than just arthropods, and typically place below the top marine builds like cetaceans and cephalopods. <laughs> and with the nerfs to the Placoderm armor ability that fish used to have access to, fish have had to get creative with their game strategies in order Ribbit to survive the current so meta. Pretty. Now let's get into the tier list to see which strategies and abilities are worth specking into if you're a fish player. Seahorses are an extremely strange build with the lowest mobility stat of any fish in the game. <laughs> this mobility stat is due entirely to their strange choice to spec into the prehensile tail ability at the cost of all but one of their fins. Now don't get me wrong, the prehensile tail ability can be extremely useful, especially for arboreal builds that use them to tether themselves to trees while keeping their hands and legs free for foraging. For a marine build though, I think there are better choices available. All the pre it's literally just like a tail with a mouth on it. 
Yeah. Yeah. The prehensile tail does is allow the seahorse to anchor itself to plants and rocks, yeah. preventing itself from getting tossed around by the current, which, again, it wouldn't need to do if it didn't lack fins. <laughs> now, they do have pretty solid <gasps> armor, which can make them Sorry, difficult to actually the take out. out of me. But their extreme lack of mobility means the seahorse cannot dodge oh, attacks. No. This leads them to getting smacked around by any hey, player who feels like stop. it, Why? even ones without any special <laughs> combat perks. And with their best matchup being against Plankton, to me, there's no way the seahorse places any higher than F2. Oh, it's, no. It's respect to the baby ability. I look cute. Stop. I look so Why adorable. Why are you doing this? <laughs> That's it's a... not supposed to go like this. Crying. That's their other unique passive, weeping. Seahorses are skull shooters, confirmed. Oh, my God. Get it? Because, you know. No, I don't. They're always like, oh, they were bullied. Oh, because they bully the fuck. That AK-47, unique passive unlocked at level 49 for the <laughs> the gat. You come here strap, dog. It's the single fin still bust, nigga. I realized bow, that maybe bow, I needed to explain bow, that joke bow. so people didn't think I was just... See my back gun for my fin? Because the fin's yeah. on the back. Yeah, shooting I, from I the see, back. I see. Hell yeah. <laughs> also in F tier, we have the ocean sunfish. Oh, I hate these This things. probably isn't too shocking, given that the sunfish is famously bad at defending itself. Yeah. But for those unaware, the like ocean it. sunfish has the highest HP stat of any fish in the game <laughs> and relies on its giant size for protection. Similar to the seahorse, the sunfish's other stats are all extremely low, and because of this, the sunfish gets bullied hard by many of the common marine threats, both large and small. They get torn to bits and tossed around particularly Aww. badly by the mammalian player base. Sea lions and orcas in particular love flexing their superiority over the largest fish Just build in the game. With it. But the sunfish has another huge weakness, parasites. See, the sunfish oh, has soft, mucus-coated skin instead of the scales traditionally used by fish players. Wow. This makes the sunfish more vulnerable to parasites, which unfortunately means that even the best sunfish mains have to play while suffering from a wide variety of debuffs from parasite infestations. That's the so sunfish players often solicit the help of support mains like the Ross and Shrimp to help cleanse themselves, and may even sit at the water's surface to give bird mains the chance to attack the parasites. Oh, that's cute. The gigantism Disgusting, strategy is cute. usually a pretty reliable strategy for avoiding attacks. Elephants, <laughs> whales, hippos, and rhinos just gonna fuck around and find out I'm dead. are generally safe from attacks once they reach their max size. However, I think in order to make the strategy work, you need to actually be able to strike back to discourage repeated attacks. Otherwise, you're kind of just a What's damage sponge and will have your HP slowly whittled down as we often see happen to the Sunfish mains. Oh, that's so sad. So because of all these vulnerabilities and over-reliance on support players Wait, for that help, made me very I sad. have to place the Ocean yeah. Sunfish in F tier. I don't even like Sunfish, they creep me out because they're too big, but... Yeah, it's, it's the unique passive, caring, <laughs> which the marine uh, uh, playing field has none of. They really are the stealthiest though. and most savage of all playing. Actually. Like, tigers and lions and stuff sometimes be like, I'm not going to kill that cute little dog right there. Like, I fuck with him. You know what I mean? They'd Empathy be... is not a thing in the ocean. Hell no, sharks don't give a fuck. I'm going to eat your baby and the eggs in front of your face. The flying fish is a build with an extremely flying unique so playstyle cool. centered around maximizing stupid. mobility. Stupid. Such a stupid By putting a huge so many amount of fish are so points into their fin trait and mobility stat. They Why? They actually gain the ability to glide through the air for surprisingly long distances. For what? This is useful as an escape option when being attacked by a larger fish player. However, as unique a move as this is, I actually think this is a pretty poor strategy overall. Being yeah. airborne might put you out of range of an attack from another fish, but it's by no means a safe position, and in many cases, is actually seriously disadvantageous. Without any way to dodge attacks midair, flying fish are extremely vulnerable to bird well, attacks, they just be which kind of nullifies up, the benefit of escaping an aquatic pursuer. And in addition, they with no way to change direction midair, it's actually not that difficult for said fish player to just intercept the flying fish's landing. So, overall, not that useful of an ability. Tacked onto it. Oh, I was just saying, like, they just kept doing it because they didn't know they was getting eaten in the sky. And so I was like, look, he just went to heaven. Look, he just, he's still up there somewhere. I'm going to try to. Flying fish always remind me of the movie Chicken Run. Yeah, hell yeah. What are you going to do, Run? I want to fly. That's it. I want to fly. So bad. Didn't you realize it don't even help, dog? Otherwise, unremarkable build. Use the power of friendship, that's what Naruto said. Also salmon. in D tree we have the Salmon family, which includes the fish builds like the Do you say Salmon or Salmon? Nobody says Salmon. 
People say salmon. I'm making fun of nobody. I just made that up. People say salmon. No, nah, I, no, nah, no. Nah, I made that up right now. That didn't exist before. I just I said salmon. So right people now. say the L in salmon. Please stop telling me. I already watched the Yule Man. I don't need any more sadness. Today. I'm just saying. I'm just letting you know. Trout and the char. This build actually has some pretty impressive stats, Ew, with high mobility being like pretty that. much required in order to withstand the constant rushing flow of the rivers that they use as their respawn points. Similar to the flying fish, this playstyle is also highly vulnerable to disruption yeah. <laughs> from non-aquatic players. Like as impressive as it is looking. that salmon and trout mains are able to make these insane jumps, the sad truth is that the thing that they're most well known for is being an easy source of XP mm -hmm. for carnivore players. Now, this jumping ability is also useful for attacking flying builds midair, but the salmon's power stat isn't quite enough Double to be able to kill. take down anything that isn't far below their weight class. Ooh. Catfish! At the bottom of C tier, we have the catfish, bottom one feeders. of the tankier yep. builds on this list with a bulky yet versatile stat spread. A lot of players undervalue the catfish and Jesus, see it as a middle tier trash due to it being a bottom feeder, not realizing that they've- You look like that nigga from fucking One Piece. Yeah. Who's that? Who you know who I'm talking about? I do know about. what I'm talking about. Nigga. He's based off of a catfish. Oh. Yeah. That makes sense then. <laughs> and Tom Kinch from League. I know. I know anime things. They've actually got a few decent <laughs> unique abilities. <laughs> most important of which is their venom. Rather than specking their Wait, fin appendages to do things venom. like yeah. flying or flexing, what? the catfish what? will spec into fins that have barbs Look on this. them, which can deliver a venomous sting. That's why While you're not the supposed Venom to grab isn't able to deal lethal damage, it's still yeah. a decent defensive ability. It does have its weaknesses though, particularly to long, disjointed hitboxes, such as the spear-like beaks of some bird builds. Nonetheless, the Catfish is still a reliable and easy to play build, being omnivorous and able to gain plenty of XP simply by digging through the mud for scraps. Yay, also in C tier we have one. the Archerfish. The only fish build the has the ability to use a ranged attack. This projectile deals essentially no, zero you're damage, supposed to fall in the water. No means useless. This projectile has high uh. knockback, making it excellent for pushing players into vulnerable positions. A waterlogged insect is one of the easiest targets in the game, and being able to force that type of interaction is an extremely powerful Sound ability. effects are always so fucking funny. This ability does have its limitations though. As is the case with most projectiles, this attack is unusable in the water meaning that the Archerfish doesn't really have any good moves for PvP against other aquatic I'm players. Crew, I, swear. I think the biggest weakness of this playstyle, though, is the position that you're forced into in order to make use of your projectile weapon. Yeah, you gotta be right Being there. Being the surface of the water Ooh. leaves you vulnerable to both attacks from below and above, and with no defense against either, the Archerfish is a high-risk, decent reward build. That makes yeah. sense. Pass. In B tier, we have the builds that are generally solid picks, but lack any truly overpowered abilities. First is the bass, the poster child for the phrase big fish in a small pond. With solid stats and the ability to grow larger than most other freshwater lake fish, bass the bass can easily spot. dominate their mm -hmm. local scene, yeah. even to the point of depleting the area of resources by gobbling them all up. Their generalist nature and lo I was gonna say, aren't bass considered an invasive and species? Yeah, that's why you hunt places? them, all, that's why you fish them so much, because they will just keep fucking eating. Yeah. Yeah large jaws mean they can prey upon just about anything from smaller fish to crustaceans to even builds like frogs and alligators. While there's not that much that's flashy or unique about this strategy, there's no denying that the bass is a consistent threat in the pond meta, and I consider them the gatekeepers of the higher tiers. Yeah, okay. Bass. Also in B what tier we that? have the fish faction's oh premier God. support class, the Cleaner Ross. The Cleaner oh, Ross the, specializes yeah. in oh, cleansing larger fish players and parasites providing an extremely useful service in the form of removing debuffs from any fish player in need. Similar <laughs> to the Ox Pecker on land. Nice. Yes. Parasites are a major threat to fish players, so it's no surprise that oftentimes even top tier builds like Sharks will add cleaner Ross players to their party. Ross do have to rely on their reputation to protect them though. And while the trails whale, during cleansing sessions are rare, swimming into a mouthful a of dagger like- t I can't hear you, what'd you say? So they're gonna show a whale. Oh, no, 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 they're not gonna show whales. No. And no. while betrayals during You're cleansing okay. sessions are rare, swimming into a mouthful of dagger-like teeth is not without risk. Muscalunge? All right, now we're in A tier, and this is where things start to get a bit overpowered. First, we have the Pickerel Guild, which includes the Pike and Muscalunge, the oh, most I know what fearsome a pike is. freshwater yeah. fish in the game. These vicious fish builds are highly aggressive and attack anything in or around the <laughs> 
from fish <laughs> to birds to mammals and even humans. <gasps> no, the duckies, Their powerful the jaws duckies. sport sharp crocodile-esque teeth, which deal serious damage and grip their target, preventing their escape. Oh my god. Oh god, but okay. It's not just about He's power dead. with these fish. Their slender body and camouflage allow them to easily hide in cover, waiting for the perfect ambush opportunity. And unlike trout, when these fish jump, oh no. it's not just wow. to clear an obstacle. They jump to attack. Oh, no! Did you see that? Oh, the poor kitty. You think it was sped up? We think that's real time. Low growth rate oh, and long respawn know. timer. Rest in peace, dog. That and that cat's me, gone. That made me so sad. He's, he's been dead, man, for years. He ain't make it back up. But even at low levels, oh, these fish are at the briny deep. While not part of the hit and run, I also include the barracuda in the same rating. Barracuda, they have yeah, a very you know similar that is. That's the thing that mom. Giant size is not a requirement to be a high tier predator, though, as exemplified by the next build on this list, the piranha. Oh, piranha! Those things are cool. Piranhas are one of the best, if not the oh, best, I didn't know they were so pretty. with the right combination of special. Look at his red eye. Look at his fucking demon red eye. They're so pretty. Why are they so shiny? <laughs> oh, because they're shiny? That's yeah, why. Yeah, the they're rest sparkly. Of, the rest of them exudes demon. Abilities and team strategies. Size genuinely doesn't yeah, matter. Cool. Their special ability, Feeding Frenzy, boosts Piranha Shoal DPS to one of the highest in the game, able to absolutely melt through the HP of even the tankiest targets. In contrast to the salmon and trout, oh, no. because of their favorable matchup against larger players, piranhas are the only fish build on this list well, those that I think the big actually rats. make Capa great bear, use of its positional bear. advantage in rivers, I don't remember, though. as many mammals and bird mates will be forced to cross your territory over the course oh, of their playthrough oh, and fall God. victim so to your sad. frenzy attacks. Oh, Jesus. Their main weakness is a lack of defensive capability, wow. meaning that they can still be easily shot by other predators. It players. squished his eyes out! The next build on this tier list does not share this weakness. Yes. Oh yeah! The lionfish is one of the most well What's defended thing fish got? builds Poison? in the game, yeah. relying on a Fuck huge arsenal of venomous spines to deal serious damage to attackers, similar to the porcupine build on land. Because of this, the lionfish is an infamously unpleasant target to attack, and most predator players tend to either ignore or actively avoid them. While their other stats are quite low, this Please. certainly hasn't stopped them from rising to dominance in their I'm home so server hungry. of the Indo-Pacific. Lionfish are also generalists, who gobble up anything that their low mobility stat allows them to catch, which can quickly deplete that. a server of its resources. Oh, and I didn't know that. And because of their quick respawn rate, lionfish have rapidly spread to other ocean servers oh, without much they're pushback. Invasive too. At least until they reach the tropical Atlantic. See, there is one fish build that has been what able to it? consistently take down lionfish. Okay. And once it? I show you how broken some of their abilities are, it'll be easy to understand eel? why. Eels. We've got two more builds to showcase. This in must S2. be an eel. But real quick, eel. I just want to point out that this is the longest video I've made so far. Yes, it is. We've got time and resources to produce. So if you're enjoying it and want more content Sub. like this, please do consider subscribing. Sub. Thanks. Sub. Sub to tier two. Eel. Yeah, eels are fucking awesome. The Moray eel is eels. one of the most uniquely powerful oh. fish in the game. With a set of strange yet Poor highly functional fish. abilities and well-placed base stat allocations. Red so first, their stats. While the highest aquatic power rating falls to sharks and whales, a close runner-up is the Moray. Their team- Larry the Lobster is from Spongebob. He's a weightlifting lobster. Oh, I okay. thought that was Mr. Krabs. Got you. Just just letting you know. Mr. Krabs is a crab. Don't Mr. Listen. Krab is... I just thought you were joking. But yes, Mr. Krab is a crab. Yep. And he's a greedy old man. He's fat. He doesn't lift weights. Okay, got it. Just wrong all the same Well, I page. remember who it is. It's the one who got Spongebob and Patrick into tanning, and then they tanned too much, and then they dried out. Yeah, they... Okay. I remember. Teeth resemble broken glass and can do similarly brutal damage in combat. Their mobility is surprisingly high for a fish that lacks pectoral and pelvic fins. But in addition to having great maneuverability in the tight spaces of a reef, they're capable of some pretty impressive bursts of speed too. Their stealth may seem low due to their vibrant coloring, but honestly, bright colors are everywhere in reef surfaces, yeah. so they don't stick out too much. In fact, their ability to contort and fit into crevices and other tight spaces yep, gives them a pretty huge advantage out. for ambushing other players. Ah! You see Where things get interesting do that though, to him? Did you see? Like, you did that, then he murdered that fish at the same time. That was hilarious. I'm an eel. You're like, ah, and it was like, yeah, you, so you get it. Players. Where things get <laughs> you interesting, get it. though, is with their defense. The Moray has a slime-based special ability, which serves multiple defensive purposes. 
It protects them from taking abrasion and puncture damage while passing through sharp coral and Which jagged spaces within the reef. It's mucus. But perhaps more surprisingly, it's great at deflecting damage from things like teeth and spikes. Not only does this give them a great matchup against sharks, but it also makes them one of the only builds in the game capable of taking down the lionfish. That makes this sense. This excellent matchup spread makes placing the moray eel in S tier an easy decision. Okay. He said, you a my hood, nigga! Like, really, though? And, like, they're not fast. I know that specifically. Those lionfish are not fast yeah. fish. Yeah, lionfish so, is wrong. He's like, I'm tea. <laughs> what, what the, the fuck, fuck is ha! 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 He was like, what are you doing here? I've been sitting here all day. I've been so hungry. Welcome. Want some tea? Was that guys from Turn? Yeah. The general from Turn? You know? What's, yes. his, what's his name? Which one? The one that with the high pitched voice. It was crazy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Simcoe. Simcoe. Yeah, he's like General Simcoe. <laughs> Welcome, General. I always skip my man. Goofy ass. Oh, so cool. The final swordfish. build on this tier list is the Billfish, billfish. apparently. Yeah. This includes the Marlin, Swordfish, and Sailfish. That's so cool. All of which have similar play styles. I'm glad this the cool group fish is top are high tier. For two reasons. First is that they have the highest swim speed in the game beating out not just all other fish, but also mammals and birds. Oh, okay, In I didn't know that, actually. unmatched yeah. speed, their large dorsal fins allow them to make tighter turns than most fish, too, okay, making them extremely speed, good chasing down prey. Their most fish, unique bro. trait, however, is their bill, one of the strangest offensive oh, abilities in the game. Oh, there we go, he game. finally got one. Useful yeah. for both slashing and stabbing, this attack is one of the few in the game How able to hit multiple is. targets at once. This makes it excellent for countering the ubiquitous safety number strategy many fish players adopt. And since the billfish hunt in packs, they can rack up insane kill counts, rivaling the hunting prowess of even packs. a pot yeah, of dolphins. Super fucking dope. With busted stats and a signature move that's both flashy and downright broken, to me there's no question that the billfish is the most that's overpowered dope. fish build in the game. Regardless of where your favorite fish build falls on the tier list, one thing's for sure. Adaptation is key to survivability in the current meta. That was great. One of the few videos where I didn't like the the tier list till it got near the top. Yeah. Normally I really like the bottom tier, but yeah, I also- Yeah, this time the bottom tier was like super bottom tier. Yeah. Super useless. Yeah. Super bottom tier. Like the bottom of the barrel, literally. They don't move, they don't fish. They don't Shooting even fish. Shooting fish in a barrel. <laughs> <laughs> okay that was i'm so sorry well i hope you guys enjoyed the video uh don't forget to leave your reaction requests and recommendations down in the comments below and other than that peace out hope biscuits it's it's getting lit you want to wink you want to show them what a real wink looks like it's getting wink no i said show them a real wink no show them Oh, nice. Winking at me is not helpful. Oh, I'm looking at you.